I mean, this is an interesting one for those of you that are looking for a bit of interesting news. Billionaire Jam Najafi set to launch a $3.75 billion takeover bid for Spurs. First of all, let's just sort of talk briefly about that. You know, 75% of the comments that come into us are critical of Daniel Levy mm. and of the ownership. And is that what we want to see, a takeover at Spurs? Do you think that's what the Spurs fans want to see? Well, the Spurs fans want to do I think the, the criticism of Daniel Levy just comes from the lack of transparency over what they are, Tottenham. We've what talked about they? many what do you times. Think they are? They're, they're a business. It's a business. The Tottenham fans want to win trophies. They've, they've been blessed with great players over the years. They have had teams that have won trophies. Daniel Levy and Joe Lewis have done a fantastic business job at Tottenham for when they took the club on to where it is now. The stadium, the training ground. Just everything Playing they've done Champions on that front. Football. Champions League football. They are not investing to try and compete with Man City, Chelsea, Liverpool, Man United. They're not in the business well, Are they that. happy just to be they're, in that area where they are, just to qualify for Champions if League? If they win something, they're delighted and they will monetise it in w the best way possible. If, so there's an end game, you know, and I just think that's where the frustration with the Tottenham fans come into play. If, if they come out and, and they said, this is what we are, we're going to do it by the book, we're going to build the club and we're eventually going to sell it. But I think all the Tottenham fans, most of the sensible ones will understand that is where they are at the moment. So I think they would welcome a takeover, but also it's buyer beware, isn't it? Because you don't know who's coming in to take over your club. We've seen Everton have big money been, and then that, you know, they're in a predicament at the moment, so you don't know. OK. Um, there's a fair bit of criticism, actually, of Antonio Conte. And every game that passes, mm. that seems to increase. I mean, this question from Rob in the middle of the screen now. If he goes at the end of the season, then come out this and is, tell us. That's the, I think that one's the most... So Sam says he thinks that... I've got that on here, actually. I think we can all agree that Conte's checked out. Combination of Levy fatigue mixed with the personal experience he's had over the last year. And he's had some traumas in his personal life over the last you mm. know, 12 months or so. Conte seems to have taken their toll. It's res reflective by the way his press conferences, his lineup, and his mm. tactics. Conte checked out. What do you think? I don't know. It it's feels like. A, do you know, he, do, he, does, he doesn't do anything to kind of dispel any of the rumours that surround his mm. future. Mm. And I think for fans, that's quite disheartening. Fans are loyal. Yeah. Um, very tribal. This is our club, it's our team. And they want people in. They want people fully invested in their team. And when the, the manager isn't really kind of putting his flag in the sand and saying, right, I'm here to stay. And, I'm, and he, obviously his contract, I think, is up at the end of this season. Um, and they want to know, like, what's going on? They want to know, are you staying with us? Are you, are you looking mm. to... Is your recruitment team, are you checking your recruitment team to look for next season and start building now? It, it, All these questions they want to answer in. He's the polar opposite to Graham Potter, isn't he, in the sense, really, that he... You know, Potter is very much a club man and he'll talk yeah. from the club's perspective and do the right thing by the club and, and try to do the proper thing. Conte, you feel, you know, there's always a little bit in him where he's, he's like, what, what's my next move? Mm. Like I said, he never really commits to the club. Mm. Isn't there an but they knew that. Yeah. yeah because never... they brought him in to win a trophy. Yeah, yeah. And he's, he's never ever... Where does no, he stay for long periods? They brought him in with the illusion of they're going to try and win a trophy, mm. in my opinion. But he's not a project manager like bringing in Ten Hag to totally transform Man United no. or bringing in Potter to yeah. transform... Those are projects, long-term projects. Yeah. It never felt like that with Conte. Hence, one-year deals all the time. Yeah. Mm. And, but also, he's not a miracle worker. He's not going to suddenly come into Tottenham... 18 months ago, with the same group of players and not real investment and take them from where they were to challenging Man City, when Man City have gone and bought Haaland and Liverpool have gone and got Newton, that was, that was never the case. Do you know what I mean? So that's why, that's why I think that the, the messaging from the ownership of Tottenham to the fans is, like, we're going to get Connie, we're going to win a trophy. He's not a miracle worker. He can't go and score the goals for the players. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The change for Tottenham says, is Conte the problem or is the latest to fall foul of Tottenham and Levy? You know, this is... A Tottenham side who's been pushing for the top four this season. This is a Tottenham side who are mm. one win away from the quarterfinals in the Champions League. Yeah. Like, how far below the quality of those players are their performances? I, I think the big... If I was a Spurs fan, the thing I'd be most upset about was when they got to the Champions League final, that was the moment to go mm. again. Mm. That was the moment to really invest. still keep talking about that, though. No, no, but I'm just saying, if you're looking at it as, as the big picture, and I think we can all pick holes in mm. Conte and the squad now, etc., they got to kind of almost Mount Rushmore. They almost got to that top of that mountain. They fell short in the final. They were close, mm. right? And they were up, up with the league and stuff like that, looking to really kind of make a, a real run at it. Mm. And then they let it slide, and it's like, well, if they had invested at that moment, you might have been sitting there thinking, right, okay, they've knocked off a couple of trophies, and they're really pushing the Liverpools and the cities mm. in the last couple of years, but it never kind of materialised.